Hi, my name is Barbie Enrico, and I'm here to welcome you to Pitch Tips Zoomcast, and where venture capitalist Fred Haney gives feedback to CEOs of startup companies to help them raise capital. Fred is an experienced venture capital fund manager, angel investor, entrepreneur, founder of Monday Club, and author of The Fundable Startup, one of the best-selling books about startup companies getting funded. So let's find out what Fred has to say to today's CEO. I'm Fred Haney, a host of the Pitch Tips Zoomcast program. And our purpose here is to uh, give a budding entrepreneur an opportunity to give a short presentation about his company to a venture capitalist. And then I'll give him some feedback and try and focus on the real key issues. Uh, we're giving you an opportunity to be a fly on the wall and sort of look in and hopefully learn a lot about uh, what it takes to uh, get a startup uh, company funded. Uh, one of the things you need to realize is that uh, venture capitalists have a tremendous time management problem. Uh, they just can't get excited about every project they see. They have to, if they're going to say no, they have to say no pretty fast. So part of the process is to quickly identify uh, a handful of issues that might be the, the biggest issues, the potential deal stoppers, uh, and then uh, try and address those. So that, that'll be a part of the process here. Uh, our guest today is Crow Bauer, who's the CEO of Orca IoT. Uh, Crow, why don't you give us your uh, one sentence version of what Orca IoT is about and uh, a little background about yourself and how you got involved? Sure. Um, Orca IoT uh, delivers job site transparency and data for data driven decisions on the construction job site, eliminating headaches. That's what we do, and we uh, lower your bottom line. Um, a little bit about myself. I started it at about the age of 22 uh, with my first uh, first company. Um, I designed, built, owned, and operated restaurants uh, overseas. Um, we grew that out. Um, well, I grew that out and uh, to about 10 locations and then had to restart uh, with a bad business partner. Grew that out to about 26 locations and about uh, six years ago, hired in a, a CEO and took a step back to take some time off and then somehow landed on a uh, job site in Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, 300 acres, 1.2 million square feet, uh, $1.8 billion of investment. And um, Balder, sorry about that. I'll kind of go back. Um, Balder, stop it. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's my, bo my bomb's boxer. Okay. Um, and then landed up in Corpus Christi, Texas on a 300 acre job site, 1.2 million square feet of buildings, uh, $1.8 million in investment and found that uh, the constructed industry in America was just as discombobulated as the construction industry in China. And um, found that even around the world, uh, you know, construction job sites face a lot of problems that can be solved via technology. However, you know, they haven't really seen a, um, a significant uh, uh, improvement on the construction site, except for the mechanism, uh, mechanization of heavy machinery. So that's uh, when two and a half years ago, my partner and I started Orca IoT Incorporated. Great, it's a good story. Well, why don't you go ahead and jump in and uh, give us your uh, longer version of your elevator speech, and sure. uh, um, and, and then we'll uh, circle around and comment. Great. All right, let me go ahead and do a screen share here. All right. Uh, I'll go to presentation mode. All right. So. Um, can you see my screen okay? Yep. Perfect. So we'll just hop right into it. So one of our taglines is digital transparency and end-to-end cost savings for the construction job site. Very simple. Um, construction sites need transparency. That's how they make decisions. That's how they move forward with projects. So that's what we provide. Um, who we are, um, we're a fully managed IoT platform and an ecosystem of devices to the construction industry. And so our products directly result in reducing job site waste, expediting project completion and enhancing data-driven decision makings. Um, something very important about data-driven decision makings, a lot of meetings that I've been in on the construction job site, 
devolve into a he said, she said screaming match. So part of our goal was to bring things to the table where there was no need for that back and forth of he said, she said, which we'll get into later and how we do that. So one of the main problems, waste. Um, you know, mainly people think about waste as being material waste. Well, there's all different types of waste. You have labor waste, machinery waste, and time waste, which is one of the largest cost drivers is, you know, your workers on site. Um, this affects 20 to 30% of the overall cost def directly affecting all construction companies' bottom line. Um, most, as we all know, construction job sites will incur overruns and delays. And uh, that also goes to 90% of all global infrastructure projects are over budgeted and delayed or both. Um, a lot of, you know, the joke is on residential, always double budget and double timeline your house renovation. And it applies directly to the industrial and commercial job site as well. So here's our three main products that we're launching with. Uh, we have the project management camera or construction camera, interior, exterior version. We have uh, two IoT track and trace devices, which we'll call the track, the Orca Trace and the Trace Plus. And then we have our personnel management or labor tracking app called the Orca Atlas. And these three, this is the start of our ecosystem of products. And we uh, officially launched actually, which I'll go into a little bit more detail is, is with the interior and exterior camera. Um, this is a market that is already defined and out there. There are competitors. <laughs> And uh, I'll show you that when we look at the current market size uh, as we go through the pitch. So the real solution though, as we just talked about the ecosystem products, you can have all your products and that really gets into the IoT. So taking just a quick minute to explain IoT. So IoT is obviously internet, stands for internet of things. And the way I put it, because I get a lot of, uh, you know, kind of from the more, uh, you know, simpler kind of, uh, project managers is like, well, what about this technology? What is IoT? What's all this sort of? It's basically everything nowadays can get online. Your microwave gets online. Your digital thermometer gets online. Your oven can get online. All those data points are transferred into the cloud, and really, <clears throat> it's all out there. However, can you translate it into a digestible and usable set that's going to deliver cost savings to the end customer? So that's where I say our solution is the Orca platform. This is a platform that we built ourselves currently. It has about 1.4 million lines of code. And it actually takes all that data from our devices and translates it into a usable, digestible uh, product for the project manager or the construction job site general contractor or owner of the construction site can actually use. So what we're doing is delivering technological sex, success of Fortune 100 companies to teams of any size. And that's what we really get to and it'll get through our business model is any size of you know uh, teams of any size on the construction job site. So current market size. So we have the IoT construction side that's you know growing very rapidly. But one of the main things why we started with the cameras is right now there's about 50,000 high resolution cameras equaling about $210 million a year in monthly service, re service reoccurring revenue. With our model, we actually don't charge an upfront cost for the hardware of the camera like everybody else does. We actually just charge the industry standard of a monthly service fee. We ship you the cameras. Then you use that for your project and ship it back to us with the provided return label. So we feel that we can get this year alone, we're looking to get to about around 10% to 15% of that market, anywhere between 5,000 to 8,000 cameras with that going on year after year. So that is a significant, you know, basically revenue stream for us. And then also with going on the cameras, we feel that we can almost give sort of a set menu or a McDonald's type menu deal where you take a couple of cameras, we'll put it into the track and trace device and the, uh, the uh, labor tracking app as well. Um, one of our main drivers in the end, we hope will be our labor app because that's literally a 25 cent cost for the data for us and 7.95 the customer, which is still great per person. And you have hundreds of workers on the job site. Um, our com competition that's currently out there, you have your camera companies, you have your GPS companies, which are mainly fleet tracking. They are not focused on the construction job site. And then you have your labor tracking, which is normally put on the office side of things, um, which none of these actually cater except for maybe the, well, for instead only the, uh, the construction uh, job site camera companies up here in the, 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 the first row, 
um, is not really focused on the construction job site. So this actually provides more headaches towards for the project managers. Um, so where Orca IIT comes into play is we offer all these three things as an ecosystem to the construction job site, actually eliminating the headaches of having multiple people on the job site who don't know about the job site nor have experience in the construction industry. <laughs> so <clears throat> our competitive advantages that we feel that we have um, that's you know basically driving our revenue streams is we operate on a better and different business model. Everybody's a CapEx. You pay for the hardware up front. We don't. Um, you have a, we uh, operate on a SaaS hardware or a hardware SaaS, which is an OpEx. So traditionally you buy the camera, you pay for the monthly data and hosting fees. With us, you don't have the upfront cost. You pay the monthly service fee. You use the products for as long as you want. When you're done, you ship them back. Um, my partner and I have both self-funded this company. Um, we recently took in a small round of friends and family. Um, however, we've kept, we bootstrapped the company from day one, trying to pass as much cost savings on to the customer. Um, we are using a high volume growth model. So as we are, I was mentioning, we are doing the hardware SaaS. We have lower margins, but we want to get more devices out there for more data, which is better savings to the uh, customer. And that just kind of is wrapped up on point four, where, you know, basically we are 100% hardware SaaS. So no upfront cost to the user. Um, our team uh, consists of two founders, uh, which is Brad Escavon, who is my partner. He is a um, the CTO and uh, the whole tech side of the company. And myself, who has um, pretty much operational experience when it comes to construction and then running companies. We have about 11 other people involved in the product, uh, which are contractors and DevOps teams and employees. and that's pretty much who we are and what we do. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to us. Okay, good job. Why don't you take off the screen share and uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll discuss your uh, presentation a little bit. Yep. All right. That should have stopped the screen share. Are we good? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but... Just close this down now. Ah, there we go. That's what we have to do. And it should be now. I just have to. I'm trying to figure out how to put this all up into. I think I can end it from here. Okay. Let's see. Oh, there we there go. go. Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, so good. That's a good presentation. I mean, it's obviously a huge opportunity. I think your part of your challenge is just to figure out which part of it uh, to, to go after and the, the best way to do it. Um, one comment I would make, and we, we don't have to wrestle this to the ground, but uh, there are several phrases that you use, jargony kinds of phrases that are obviously uh, part of the language you speak every day, uh, but they won't necessarily resonate for your audience. So I, I'm thinking about job site. Mm -hmm. you, 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 use, you use that phrase a lot right at the beginning, um, yeah. and I'm not quite sure what that means. You know, you, you, you need to really... Uh, uh, paint a picture, help, help me understand exactly what you mean by a job site. So maybe just uh, use construction site instead of job site? Probably better, but 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 even then you might want to qualify it a little bit. I mean, you're not talking about residential housing, you're talking about uh, big uh, commercial construction sites. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, another one is uh, digital transparency. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure anybody knows quite what that means, sure. <laughs> but uh, in your context, uh, it, it, it has a meaning. So I would either explain that when you first use it or yeah. hold off and uh, uh, bring it up later in the presentation when you can get into a little more detail. Um, and another one in that category is uh, IoT. Yeah, you, you do explain it a little bit, but it was kind of later in the presentation. So when you say IoT platform um, and you say, you know, like my microwave, my refrigerator, all those things. Um, but I think um, you, you want to narrow it down uh, as quickly as you can to specifically what it means to you. I mean, in your case, your primary uh, you're an internet of cameras, <laughs> primarily, yeah. right? I mean, uh, there may be some other things, 
but your primary focus is on cameras. So I would say that what you, you don't want your audience to be thinking, what does he mean by that? Right. You, you know, you, you, you got to uh, make it as uh, co concrete as you possibly can. So one of the uh, first things here is uh, you're solving a problem. It's clearly a, a problem for a lot of these uh, construction companies. But how do they perceive the problem? You know, does it show up? I mean, what's keeping them awake at two o'clock in the morning? Does right. it show up as uh, uh, cost overruns, schedule overruns, and how do they measure that? I mean, how how uh, how do you? So you need to be able to go to your customer and say, "Look, I can reduce your cost overruns by eighty percent." Right. Know, so how do you how do you measure that? How does the customer perceive that? Right. Yeah. I mean, we it, it's just you know trying to get what it's been, you know, we have literally a, a plethora of solutions and, and, and uh, you know, data points and stuff like that. It's just, what is the best stuff during the pitch to deliver? Cause you know, you only get, like you said, VCs, only, you know, they can't get excited about every product, but what are the points that you can hit on and be like, Hey, we actually have all that. I mean, the, the deck started out, you know, almost at like 50 slides and everybody's like, you got to compress it to 10. You know, it's the same thing as, as you said, VCs have a, you know, they can't sync everything. It's like, how are you going to catch them with a couple of the phrase words, a couple of the data points, like this, how we can drive it. Because like you said, I've talked to many people in being on the construction site myself, you know, what does remote job, remote job site access, knowing where your people are, what they're doing, if they're getting the job done, because if you don't get the job done on time, the customer is going to come back. And then, like I said, it devolves into these meetings of he said, she said, and if you can come with like, here's time-lapse video of the entire project, here's the amount of guys that were on site and their heat map tracking through our Orca Atlas and all my machinery and movable assets, here are all the data points as well. There's no need for a back and forth because there's lots of moving parts on the construction jobs on these larger sites. And also, I guess in response to another is like, because we've taken away the cost barrier to entry, we're actually in talks with some larger residential commercial developers who've wanted to use these projects, but products, but couldn't because of that large capital outlay in the beginning. Yeah, I understand. Well, I think you can be more specific mm -hmm. uh, without adding slides. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just harder to uh tighten up the language a little bit so yeah. here, another uh, way i think you can do that uh that will help you in several different areas of your presentation uh is to talk uh fairly quickly about your served market you know what what's the market that you really intend to serve who who mm -hmm. are you going to call on and exactly what are you going to pitch to them because right. my guess is I, mean, I think that solves several problems here. One is that'll help you be more concrete and specific and your audience will understand it. Uh, but the other thing is when you start to estimate your market, you don't want to go out there and say, this is a $20 billion market and we only right. have to have 2% of it. I mean, uh, right. nobody is interested in 2% market shares. You need to show me the market uh, where you can gain a 30% market share. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what makes profitable companies. We have a, a, a commanding and compelling and sustainable um, high percentage of the, of the market. So I think that means uh, it, it means being more specific. It also means kind of narrowing down uh, your, uh, your, your target. Uh, and that's going to have impact when you talk about competition. It's going to have impact when you talk about market size. It's going to have impact just as you explain uh, uh, what your solution is. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, I think it's just getting those points, uh, you know, delivered in a, uh, you know, a very concise and, and, and laser focused way, because we definitely have have those points. And uh, the, the, the other suggestion I'd make up by make is that uh, your competition slide, you're, you're kind of looking at it from the company's point of view. I think you want to have a competition slide from the customer's point of view. Right, yeah. You know, when the customer looks at you, how do they perceive you? How do they uh, see you uh, related to 
your other competitors or other people who are doing even similar things or the way they're solving or not solving the problem today. So now you're talking more about what's the competitive dynamic, you know, do, yeah. is it, what, how do people decide what system or product to buy? Is, is it price? Is it ease of installation? Is it cost? Is it cost savings? Um, you, you know, you, you want a couple of little uh, matrices probably that show how you stack up in the industry on those issues, which are the kind of the primary things that customers think about. I, and I think that's also part of, if, if I get, a, get some feedback on, so I, I definitely agree with you on that, but you know, they're really, why we were, there was a little bit of difficulty when with such a simplistic slide was, there's really nobody out on the market doing what we're doing right now. They, they, there's a focus like, and there's been a lot of like little small companies, mom and pops that came up, raised like, or little companies that raised three or $4 million. They're only solving one certain little aspect. And that's why I'm trying to drive the point home on the construction site. And that's causing more headaches and actually people stepping away from the adoption of technology because now project managers have these like, I, I hate to say it, nerdy little tech guys on site who don't understand what OSHA is. They don't understand that they have to wear a steel toe. They don't, they're, they're almost turning into liabilities. So, you know, I, I understand what you say from the customer side of things, but that's sort of what we were trying to encompass is that there's no one out there that's sort of, and what we are trying to do is, you know, a one-stop shop. I mean, we have 14 other products in the pipeline, but, you know, we're focusing on the three first. These are the three main ones. And then encompassing that is something that no one else is doing out there right now. Yeah, that, that focus is important to convey. So in, in terms of tightening up your pitch deck a little bit, I think the idea of uh, defining your terms a little more carefully and uh, make sure you're not leaving the audience hanging about, well, what does that mean? I mean, don't use yeah. jargon words. You know, sure. Talk like you're, like you're talking to your, to your grandmother. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, with respect to risks, I think the if I were going to have a, a you know a second meeting with your team, uh, I would want to focus on this issue of serve market, kind of narrow into exactly um, what customer and what solution, um, and then that'll help me dig in a little deeper, probably on uh, uh, competition. Um, yeah. So it's it's that uh, I, I would want to understand the narrow for focus there, serve market. Uh, what does that really say about who your competitors are? How's the problem being solved today? How do you yeah. measure uh, the improvement that you're going to bring? Th those are the kinds of things that uh, um, I, I would suggest for uh, a, a follow-up session. Um, does that make sense? 100%. <laughs> Crow, thank you. Um, okay. uh, you're, you're doing a good job. You're tackling, a, tackling a, an important problem. And uh, we wish you uh, every success with uh, with what you're doing. Um, thanks for listening in. If, if you're uh, viewing us on YouTube, uh, this is one of a series of these uh, pitch tips Zoomcasts that we're going to do. Uh, they will provide a steady flow of additional content to our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so be sure and come back and listen for more and subscribe and share us with your friends. Crow Bauer, thank you for uh, being with us. Thank you very much. I definitely enjoyed it.